Okay, uh, welcome, welcome everyone, um, and thanks for joining us uh, for this session. Uh, so let's start. So the topic of the session is uh, automated data source creation using Tableau SDK and REST API. Uh, I'm Sham Reddy. I'm uh, part of Trinet. Uh, I'm a solution architect. I've been working close to two years now. Um, Ram? Yeah, I'm Ram Mudhapuru, um, solution architect for data and BI at Trinet. OK, let's move on. The agenda is uh, I'll go through introduction, uh, wherein I'll just talk about uh, our industry, what we do at Trinet. Uh, and then uh, we'll go through the background uh, in terms of our legacy landscape, uh, you know, the, uh, in terms of the tools and technologies of the legacy landscape, and then we'll talk about the problem statement, and then uh, we will actually talk about the solution that we have implemented. Uh, then as part of the demo, Ram is going to take through some videos. Uh, we have a few videos to show, and uh, we'll go through that. And then uh, he'll also show the uh, the SDI, SDK and the REST API script. And then finally, we'll have a Q&A session. OK, a little bit about our, our industry. Uh, professional employer organizations, are also called as PEOs, uh, provide comprehensive uh, HR solutions to small and medium uh, scale uh, businesses across the country. Uh, primarily, uh, uh, the, the, they provide services which include uh, payroll processing, uh, benefits, HR, tax uh, administration, and regulatory compliance assistance. Uh, through our company, Trinet, uh, uh, we provide, uh, you know, uh, our em employees of all these small uh, businesses, they gain access to all the big company employee experience, which includes uh, retirement plans, uh, health benefits, uh, which includes medical, dental, vision, life, and uh, many other benefits. Uh, also, they get the mobile app uh, and uh, other uh, benefits, which otherwise, uh, for a small company, would be difficult to have that kind of an experience. Trinet is a leading uh, PU organization. Uh, we support close to 16,000 uh, customers uh, with over 350,000 uh, WSEs, uh, or worksite employees. Uh, we are headquartered at Dublin, California, uh, we both are from Austin office. Okay, uh, in this slide, uh, I would like to uh, take through the legacy landscape, uh, how we used to uh, be in terms of different uh, tools and technologies, what are the different sources. Uh, our key sources are uh, HR and uh, finance, being HR company, HR is our uh, key source. And uh, there are other source systems, uh, source systems as well. Uh, the data warehouse uh, used to be on Oracle DB platform. Uh, and we use uh, ODI, also called as Oracle uh, Data Integrator, which is a key uh, ETL tool to extract, transform, and load into our data warehouse. So the data used to, uh, you know, we used to extract the data from uh, sources and load into the staging into using ODI. And then we use a combination of uh, ODI and PL SQL to load into data warehouse. Uh, it was a nightly batch uh, which used to take anywhere from uh, 8 to 24 hours, uh, depending upon the volume. Uh, and then uh, for the reporting, we were primarily using Cognos uh, for both uh, dashboards as well as reports. So this was our landscape. Uh, let me just go through the problem statement. Across the industry, uh, businesses are actually evolving pretty fast. There's a lot of innovations happening. Uh, business constantly changing. There are a lot of demands. Uh, our business uh, requirements, with respect to the data warehouse, I mean, uh, of course, you know, for the big data, you know, for data sciences, you know, not, not keeping that out of uh, the scope, but with respect to the data, data warehouse, there are a lot of requirements that was put forward. And we have categorized uh, under two different categories. One is data, and the other one is reporting. Uh, on the data side, uh, near real time, that was our key requirement. Uh, and being a HR company, security is one of our key requirement, uh, even on the back end as well, uh, which means uh, when you know, engineering colleagues, uh, anyone is directly accessing the database, we want to ensure you know, all the sensitive information is all masked. 
right? That was also a key requirement. Also, uh, have a better SLA in terms of uh, report response time. That, that was also a key requirement. Uh, rest of them are you know, standard uh, data warehouse uh, requirements. Uh, on the reporting side, that's the front face you know, for the business. Obviously, there's a lot of requirements. Uh, having a rich visualization is one of the key requirements on the reporting side. Um, Again, security in terms of row level security, column level security, data masking on the reporting side, uh, as well is a uh, you know, uh, key requirement. As well as uh, from a user experience standpoint, ability to search reports uh, across vast inventory of reports, uh, ability to share, subscribe, and schedule, uh, also you know, user personalization, supportability to cross-functional reporting uh, across multiple subject areas, uh, supportability to time series, you know, in terms of YTD, QTD, and MTD, uh, you know, all, as well as you know, ad hoc reporting. Right? That's one of the key uh, requirement. Uh, so many different requirements on the reporting side. Now, if I tr try to map the legacy application in terms of the requirements that we used to meet and the requirements that we were not able to meet, some of the key things that we were not able to meet is near real time, as you see. As, as you have seen in the previous slide, uh, the data load was a nightly batch load. It, so we never had a fresh data coming into the data warehouse. It used to take anywhere from eight to 16 hours. Um, you know, near real time, we were clearly was not able to meet using the legacy application. Uh, security, we were actually meeting, you know, from a security standpoint, we we're actually partially meeting it. Uh, but you know, we do want to actually mask it on the database side as well when, uh, you know, the IT developers or engineering colleagues when they log in. Uh, and then ad hoc reporting, again, it's partial. Uh, we want to have a better supportability in terms of, uh, you know, ensuring that, you know, analysts have the data readily available across all of the enterprise uh, data subject areas. So that was one of the key things that which uh, we were partially meeting. Uh, and the uh, ability to support cross-functional reporting, time series, we can support, you know, we used to support, uh, you know, some of these complex reporting, but it, there is to be work around, and you know, there is to be a lot of back and forth with the IT teams uh, when it comes to some of these requirements. So taking all of those requirements and you know, putting on the right hand side, uh, let me just take you through the landscape, current landscape, the solution we have implemented. Uh, we still have the same set of uh, source systems. Uh, HR finance uh, being our key uh, source system. In addition, to, in, in addition to that, you know, we have added a bunch of other source systems, uh, CRM, you know, uh, other applications, SaaS applications, and uh, data warehouse. We have actually this is a you know a new data warehouse that we had to come up to ensure uh, and meet some of the key requirements. Uh, the data warehouse is on Oracle DB, but uh, we have a plan to migrate into Exadata in 2019. Uh, we are leveraging uh, Golden Gate uh, and Informatica. Golden Gate as a data replication tool uh, on a real-time basis, and for Informatica as an ETL tool, specifically with respect to SaaS applications to extract the data. Uh, with Golden Gate, we were extracting the data from source system, replicating into our staging layer, and it is a persistent stage, as you see here, which means we retain the complete history. It's an absurd. Uh, we retain the complete history. And when it comes to loading into the data warehouse, uh, the core layer, uh, we took uh, two different approaches. Uh, one is uh, we created, uh, for simple uh, facts and dimensions, we created database views, which were directly on top of the staging layer. So that way, we were able to achieve the near real time, uh, as in when the data is loading into the source system in five minutes, 10 minutes, data was readily available in the warehouse. right? Uh, for complex uh, facts, uh, spe specifically, you know, for the fact tables, we were actually leveraging PLS combination of PLS SQL and Informatica. Uh, still, some of the complex uh, were getting loaded through mini batches using Informatica or a PLS SQL. Uh, but for snapshotting and uh, other complex fact tables, you know, uh, which was you know once once a day or you know once a week, you know, depending upon the snapshots. On the reporting side, uh, we have two different applications. Uh, there is a customer app, uh, which was primarily uh, using Tableau. Uh, we, we have generated the dashboards, and uh, uh, we generate the PDF documents uh, to provide it to our customers. 
the other application is uh, Tiger. Uh, this is, uh, we still are using Tableau as a front face for reporting. Uh, but here we, are, we have integrated uh, with a homegrown portal. It's a custom built portal. Um, and we are leveraging SDK and REST API of Tableau, integrating both of them together and uh, serving uh, internal business customers. Now, with that extension, uh, which means you know, usage of the Tableau APIs and the portal, we were able to meet some of our key requirements, which otherwise would have been difficult to uh, cater to, uh, such as uh, you know, applying the column level security. As I, as I mentioned, you know, being a HR company, security is one of our key requirements. And we want to ensure that you know, if users does not have access to certain sensitive columns uh, or certain subject areas, we want to ensure when they log in, uh, they don't have access or they don't see that subject areas. Right? Uh, plus, uh, ability to support some of the complex uh, requirements, such as cross-functional reporting, which means ability to create a report across multiple subject areas, one or more, based on confirmed dimensions or role-playing dimensions. Uh, then ability to have uh, you know, uh, ad hoc reporting, to s supportability to ad hoc reporting uh, with much ease. Uh, having to provide a centralized model so a user can actually select all the attributes, whatever he needs, and then create visualizations to tab Tableau. Those are some of the key uh, requirements uh, which otherwise would have been difficult without this uh, extension. Now let's uh, drill through. Uh, the uh, those three boxes inside that circle, which is part of this session. So here for this portal, uh, we are using many different tools and technologies. Uh, as you see here, we are using Redis, MongoDB, uh, different Java services, uh, uh, web servers, application servers, uh, metadata repository. All of these are different tools and technologies that we are using. So to just go on from right-hand side, we have a metadata repository. It's, uh, and it's an Oracle schema uh, yeah. wherein we have created a custom model which is sitting on top of EDW. Uh, all of the data elements of uh, EDW, which includes uh, tables, columns, and uh, uh, views, and the relationship between all of these different tables uh, is specified within that metadata repository, uh, including the definitions and everything. Now, this metadata repository is exposed into the presentation model, which is actually on the portal side. Uh, it's exposed uh, using the Java services. So the four boxes that you see in the middle, Java services, uh, these are different endpoints of Java. Uh, the Java service connects to the metadata repository and expose the data elements onto the presentation layer on the portal. Uh, we'll not go into details of it. Uh, we'll cover you know, part of the portal and the REST APIs primarily. Uh, and then uh, when user actually is, is selecting attributes uh, through the presentation layer uh, for creating a report or a data source, uh, the Java service is going to generate a query based on the selection. So there is a query pip, uh, there is a service for a query pip in terms of like, you know, okay, what are the different subject areas that user has selected? Let's say user might have selected from multiple different subject areas, right? So we need to you know, ensure that, you know, we have to prepare a query and then ensure that you know, we don't actually uh, you know, create a, a Cartesian product, for example, you know, when it comes to multiple subject areas. So the query prep service takes care of that, and the query generation is going to uh, essentially is going to generate the SQL query, and now it can actually either execute on the database uh, to generate the data, which is going to be in a JSON format, or it, it's going to actually uh, provide this as a SQL as an input parameter to the Tableau API so it can be directly published into Tableau. So uh, when a user wants to save uh, as a live connection, it's going to actually directly take the query, publish uh, through the Tableau API into Tableau server. If the request is an extract, it's going to run the uh, query on the database, extract it, convert into a JSON format, and provide as a parameter to the REST API, which is going to again publish into the Tableau. Uh, we also have additional services uh, such as uh, object repo and entitlement service, which is on top of uh, MongoDB. Uh, this is uh, you know, capturing all the user behavior of uh, you know, the portal, as well as uh, taking care of the security in terms of the column level security and access to different objects. 
Now let's go through the portal, a uh, little bit about portal and you know, what are the different uh, uh, you know, features that we were able to support and also the details of the REST API. Okay, uh, the left hand side, the, that's our presentation model wherein uh, we are presenting all of the different subject areas of EDW, which includes uh, you know, uh, all the different data groups of uh, EDW, all the data elements uh, at the lowest grain. Uh, if you have like you know, 100, 100 tables and 4,000 columns, all of them are shown in that left panel, uh, nicely uh, structured by different folders. So with this model, we were, first thing is we were able to actually come up with one centralized presentation model, right? Uh, which means uh, even if uh, uh, there is no relationship between two different subject areas, it is still shown. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit about you know, how uh, you know, the cardinality and uh, you know, how the, uh, the scope is determined based on user selection. So with this model, we were able to support the cross-functional reporting. Now, since all of the subject areas are laid out uh, with all of the attributes, user can pick any attribute and uh, create a report. It could be coming from one subject area. If a user needs uh, just one subject area, then he can limit that by clicking on that dropdown, uh, which will show the, all the list of subject areas. Let's say if user is going to select benefits, then it's going to cut down to only list of columns that belong to benefits. And then you know, he can actually select all the columns that is required and uh, create a, you know, a Tableau data source. Or if he wants to create a, a cross-functional reporting, then um, he can select a multiple, uh, he or she can select from multiple uh, subject areas, multiple columns from multiple subject areas, and then create a report. And if they if uh, the measures coming from two different subject areas belong to the, the same, there is a commonality in terms of the dimensions, then it's going to create one single query, combine them, and then generate one single uh, uh, report or a data source. So with this model, we were also able to support the security needs, uh, which includes uh, applying the role-level security, which is taken care as part of the report, uh, as part of the query generation. Um, column level security, so if, if a user does not have access to certain columns, it, it won't be shown. It's completely going to be hidden from, uh, from this view. Um, also, we were able to mask it. If a user has, you know, they can see the columns, but you know, if a user does not have access to PIIs or the sensitive columns, it's going to be completely masked, which we'll see in the videos. Uh, also, we were able to uh, you know, provide supportability to some of the complex uh, functionality, which includes the time series and union and so on. Uh, we also have actually uh, supported a concept called dynamic measures. Uh, we'll see in the video. Uh, the concept is uh, basically have, uh, we want to sometimes, in, in some cases, you know, we want to treat two different attributes, one dimension, one measure, as one attribute which means we want to combine both of them and show as one attribute. Uh, so that's the uh, you know, concept which uh, we'll show in the video. Uh, and with this, uh, we're also able to optimize the query. Since we generate the query based on the selection, we were able to optimize, apply certain uh, mandatory filters. Let's say if, you, if the data volume you know, is uh, pretty huge and has a multiple number of years, uh, there is a recommended filters that is automatically applied upon user selection. Uh, user has an provision to remove it, but you know it is going to show up automatically based on user selection. So that's one of the thing, uh, as well as you know showing the complete dictionary of every single element uh, of the data warehouse. So uh, with this, as and when there are enhancements happening to EDW, uh, everything gets shown up into this. Uh, you know, presentation model. So we don't have to go back and change the data sources, you know, or uh, change any of the uh, presentation layer on the Tableau side. All we have to do is, you know, just go update this metadata repository, which is going to show up here. Uh, with this, uh, we'll go th uh, to the demo. Uh, Ram is actually going to take, take to the demo and walk us through on uh, some of the videos. Okay, thanks, Champ, for the introduction of the architecture and, and our presentation layer. Um, what we're going to do right now is, you know, we're going to. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the videos uh, that we've created based on, you know, what we've implemented. Um, that shows how a user can, you know, create a simple report. 
uh, and create a data source um, you know, from the output that is generated from the report. And also we'll walk through the code as well. Okay. The first video is uh, to show how a user can create a live connection data source uh, within Tableau. What I'm showing here is uh, Tableau. I've logged in as me. I'm you know, looking at the project. I'm looking at my project. Uh, there are no data sources available in my project right now. Uh, we'll go to the portal. Uh, this is our Tiger portal. Um, user has, uh, you know, user will be able to browse the data sources that are available in Tableau. Users uh, will have an option to browse all the reports uh, that are available in Tableau and also the reports that are created using the report engine. Um, there will be an indication for the users whether uh, they have access to the report or the data source uh, when they're browsing the catalog. Um, users will have an option to you know, request the access for the reports or the data source as well. Uh, this is out of scope for this presentation. Uh, our main focus is uh, to show how uh, a user can create a report using the report engine and you know, uh, extract that uh, and create a data source uh, in Tableau using that. Um, we'll go through the report engine. Um, and on the left-hand side, uh, these are the subject areas that Sham was mentioning about. Uh, you know, all the subject areas are exposed in the presentation layer. I will go ahead and um, pick up a few of the attributes and create a simple report. Uh, let me pick up something from customer. I'll pick up the company vertical. And I'll pick up the measure. Uh, you know, pick up the year and the quarter from the cost. And pick up cost as a measure. And on clicking on next, users will have an option for uh, providing the filters. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, provide a filter for the year, for the year 2016. Let's go ahead and, okay, click okay. Let's go ahead and run, run the report, okay? The data on the screen is actually displayed in the tabular format. If users want to create awesome visualizations using Tableau, uh, they can go ahead and save the report. Uh, with that, we have an option to save it as a data source, a Tableau data source. We have two options, live or extract. Uh, I'll name it as TC18 live demo. Okay, and I'll go ahead and save the report. Takes a few seconds to save the report. Okay, the report is saved successfully. What we'll do is, you know, we'll go back to Tableau and reload the page, okay? Uh, we can see that ta TC18 live demo data source is created successfully. Uh, it connects to the database and I'm the owner for it. We'll go ahead and select that from actions. Let's create a simple workbook just to make sure that you know this workbook is created successfully. Okay, um, company vertical, all the dimensions and the measures are in. Um, let's just pull few of the attributes onto the right-hand side and see the output. Since it's a live connection, it takes a few seconds. Uh, and then cost, okay. That's how a user can create their own live connection data source in Tableau. Uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll see how a user can create an uh, data source as with an extract. I'll use the same report. Um, we'll go ahead and save uh, the report as an extract. I'll name it as TC18 extract demo. Save it. Okay, the report is saved successfully. There are two things happening here when the report is getting saved. Um, uh, one is uh, the metadata of this report is actually getting stored. I mean, that means you know, user selection of all the attributes, the filters they're applying, is actually getting stored uh, in uh, our metadata repository in MongoDB. Users will have an option to schedule these extracts as well. Since the report metadata is saved, users will have an option to schedule these reports, uh, schedule these extracts to run on, on a periodic basis as well. Okay, so we'll go back to Tableau. Um, and you know there are 
let's reload the page. TC18 extract demo of Tableau data source is created. It's pointing to a .td file, and I'm the owner for it. Okay, let's create a simple report again. It shows the same attributes on the left-hand side, uh, the dimensions and the measure. Uh, let's pick the dimension and the measure. And it gives the same output again. And that's how the users will be able to create a data source with, as an extract. Okay. Uh, but this comes of, again, you know, there, there'll be definitely a need for security as well. Um, let's go through how uh, we have implemented uh, security at Trinet. Uh, let's create a report from Report Engine. Um, as you can see, there are eight uh, subject areas that I have access to. Again, I've uh, logged in as me. Uh, so, and from the measures as well, from the customer measures, I have access to monthly, quarterly, weekly, and yearly snapshots. What, you'll, what I'll do is, you know, I'll go ahead and create a simple uh, report on uh, the company. I'll pick up company code, company name, company address. Um, and in the filters, I'll put a uh, default company filter because I don't want to show all the company information here. I'll put a default filter for 31T. Okay. Click OK and click Run. So it displays company code, company name, and company address as well. Remember this, it's 1234 Main Street. Um, what I'll do is, you know, I will log out and log in as my colleague Sham Reddy here. Uh, and then, you know, go to the report engine again. You can see that, you know, he has access to only four uh, subject areas. And, you know, even if I go to customer subject area, uh, from the measures, he has access to only monthly um, uh, snapshot and not everything else. So that, that's how we take care of attribute level security and um, the subject area um, level security as well. What we'll do is, you know, we'll, uh, I'll go ahead and create the same simple report that I've created uh, as logged in as me, and um, we'll see how the data shows up on the report. So we have defined, uh, you know, company address details as PII attributes. PII is nothing but your personal identification information. Um, since we have defined those uh, attributes as PII, uh, we'll see how the output comes uh, on the report. Let's click on OK and uh, run the report. Since we have defined company uh, address details as PII attributes, you know, the data is actually masked. That's, so that's how we, you know, we manage uh, uh, our security within, Tri uh, within Trinet. Okay. Now that we've seen uh, the demos, uh, we'll go through how you know a Tableau data source is getting created from Portal. Um, again, as as we've shown, there are two options for the users. Uh, one is for them to create a live connection or an extract. If uh, the user chooses to create a live connection data source, uh, what Portal does is basically Portal. Uh, you know, creates the SQL, uh, generates the SQL, and then passes that SQL to the Python script. And Python script takes the uh, SQL, uh, uses, as we all know, you know, Tableau data source is an XML file. Um, and, you know, uh, it's set of tags, you know, uh, what Python script does is basically takes the SQL coming from portal, replaces uh, the SQL in the sample.tds file, and saves it as a new file uh, based on the data source name that is given uh, in the portal. If, if the user chooses to create an extract of, as a data source, uh, you know, again, what portal does is, again, uh, creates the SQL, extra, uh, you know, executes the SQL, and creates the JSON object uh, with data uh, in it, and passes the JSON object to, uh, to the Python script. Uh, Python script uses Tableau SDK module uh, to uh, create the .td file, and then, you know, uh, and, and what happens is, you know, once a Tableau data source file is created, uh, we'll go ahead and look up on our metadata uh, database to see, uh, to see, you know, which, uh, which project this data source has to be published. Based on that, you know, if the project exists, uh, it go, uh, script goes ahead and uh, publishes the data, uh, uh, data source in that project. If not, you know, it creates the um, project. 
the only thing that, that is not available as part of the publishing is uh, to set the owner of uh, the data source. You know, once, uh, once the data source is published, we update uh, the data source owner using the update uh, data source REST API endpoint. Okay, so that's, that's what is the flow. Uh, and uh, in this slide, what I'm showing here is uh, how to uh, you know, create a .tds file. On the right-hand side, uh, this is the sample .tds file that I was referring to in the previous slide. Uh, again, as, as we see, this is uh, an XML file. Uh, what we can see here is the connection details to the database, uh, and, and also we can see that there is a SQL um, script uh, uh, within that. Uh, this sample, uh, this script is actually uh, reading this uh, sample.tds and replacing the connection details uh, based on the environment that script is running, dev, QA, stage, and prod. This replaces uh, uh, it to the corresponding database uh, details and also replaces a SQL script uh, with the script that is coming from portal. Uh, one spe special uh, care that we're taking care of is uh, Tableau expects uh, you know, special characters for uh, less than and greater than symbol. Uh, we just replace it with uh, two characters of that. That's a special uh, uh, thing that we're taking care of as part of the script, okay? And then we go ahead and save this as a .tds file and will be used for publishing it, okay? Uh, the next thing uh, is how to create and extract uh, data source. Uh, again, since uh, the portal is passing JSON uh, file, uh, this script reads the JSON object, identifies uh, the column names and, and the column data types uh, that are available in, in the object, and you know, reads that, creates the uh, definition, uh, table definition, and then you know, uh, adds the table definition to the table. And again, this is using Tableau SDK uh, module in Python. Uh, and, and the only special thing that we're taking care of is the date formats. Uh, and you know, if, based on the date format, you know, uh, we add the data into, uh, into the table. Okay, and you know, we, we, uh, the script parses the JSON file uh, and then you know, adds the rows uh, to the .td file and saves the .td file. Okay, uh, I'm not going through the complete publish uh, uh, and all other details. If you want to get more details on it, you know, the code is actually committed onto the GitHub, uh, and you can reach out to me if you guys have any questions on, on the code. I, I'll try to help you guys. I would like to actually cover a few more uh, uh, videos. Uh, there's a couple of uh, more videos to cover, uh, talking about the advanced features. We covered, uh, you know, how to create a live connection, uh, how to create an extract, how to create, uh, you know, how to apply the security in terms of the rows and columns, uh, using the combination of Portal, REST APIs, uh, and Tableau. Now we'll actually cover a couple of more advanced features. Now this video uh, is going to cover cross-functional reporting. Uh, most of the cases, uh, you know, uh, when users is trying to create a report, uh, typically it gets contained within as the given subject area. You have, uh, you know, all the dimensions and fact tables part of that subject area, so you can create the report. But when it comes to the cross-functional reporting or uh, creating a report using multiple subject areas. Now you, you're talking about you know, dealing with multiple fact tables. It could be one fact table or multiple fact tables, right? Uh, now when you actually want to combine two different fact tables, uh, there needs to be a common element. Uh, else you know, it's going to create a Cartesian product. So uh, unless you have a common dimension, you will not be able to combine for the cross-functional reporting. So that's the criteria. And the goal is when a user is selecting multiple attributes, uh, the goal is to ensure that you know the number of queries that are generated is as minimal as possible, which means if there is a relationship between two different subject areas based on common element, we try to generate one single query, right? And uh, let's go ahead and uh, select uh, 
company vertical from the customer dimension and uh, and we'll select a, you know a role playing dimension which is uh, specifically the time here from the cost uh, subject area we're selecting year and quarter uh, and then from revenue subject area we are selecting uh, you know the role playing dimension again here we are selecting the quarter and year of that particular subject area and then we'll select the measure revenue amount uh, if you see here uh, here the common element across both of the subject area cost and revenue is company vertical right uh, year and quarter we have selected from both subject areas now this is a role playing dimension right uh, and then couple of measures you have option to apply the filters uh, either on one of the subject area or both subject areas so in this particular case we are applying uh, on the both subject areas year and quarter i'm just going to select uh, one of the quarter year and quarter 2016 q4 then click on okay and then execute uh, the report if you see here uh, the selection uh, the number of attributes that are selected are five attributes company vertical year and quarter from cost cost as a measure and year and quarter from revenue and revenue amount five attributes selected but the output has only four attributes now what's happening behind the scenes is uh, uh, you know in one of the slide i have shown you you know the query preparation and then there is a query generation so the query preparation tool was determining uh, if all of these five elements are they interrelated right so the first thing that's go it's going to check is you know okay, how many subject areas i'm dealing with if there are two different subject areas can i actually merge it yeah. and then it sees you know are there any common dimensions because you know merging if there is a common dimension we can merge if let's say if you have selected only all the measures then obviously we can merge it because it's all aggregated measure with no dimension so you can easily merge but when it comes to dimension it needs to check if there is a relationship you know for both of the measures so it's going to check you know if the company vertical is a common dimension across both uh, if it finds that you know the scope of uh, the company vertical is across both of them it's going to understand it understands that you know i can go ahead and merge it but then now you have year and quarter from cost year and quarter from revenue as well Uh, now this is a role playing dimension uh, you know the query uh, preparation tool or the service understands that you know this is a role playing and you know it has the same name it and you know we can actually potentially merge it so what happens is it will create two different queries two different sql queries one sql query against the cost subject area another sql query against the revenue subject area and then there is going to be an outer select statement which is going to merge both uh, both of the queries based on that common elements right and that's why we are able to see both of them cost and revenue side by side let's go over and uh, save that as an uh, tableau data source as an extract tc18 uh, cross functional report let's save it then uh, let's go over and refresh uh, the data sources now uh, you'll see the cross functional demo uh, let's actually try to create a report using tableau now since you know we have selected from uh, you know the portal uh, i want to actually create a cross functional report i'll go over and select company vertical and uh, cost and revenue from uh, you know the measures section and then when you actually you know want to see a side by side for both of those measures you will be able to see side by side you know for by company vertical so that's an example for cross functional reporting and uh, i just want to show one final attribute groups also called as dynamic measures so in this particular case uh, i'm selecting one of the subject area case subject area here uh, we have multiple measures we have regular measures and we have dynamic measures now these three uh, case category case status and case type uh, you have a small square icon uh, that's a dynamic measure so what it means is i'm i'm actually combining a number of cases 
along with the case category. As, so two different attributes of the database as one attribute on the portal. So now when you expand that measured group, you will be able to see all the distinct values of the database. Now these values are not uh, columns. These are actually the rows of the database. So when you click on that plus icon, it's retrieving the values from the database and showing as if it is a measure. So here, when I expanded case status, all the distinct values of case status is shown as if they are measured. Now, if I want like number of open cases, number of closed cases, I don't have to do multiple clicks. Like, you know, I don't have to select case status, number of cases, and apply a filter on case status. Instead, I just select, you know, uh, just open cases. Now, in this particular case, we also have an ability to select the complete group. Uh, if we select the complete group, uh, it will automatically convert that into a cross tab with all of the values. I've applied the filter, uh, uh, you know, uh, 2017 Q2, and when I execute it, for that quarter, it's going to show you all the different measures automatically pivoted. Uh, in the database, would, it would have been, you know, individual case, uh, distinct values of cases and the corresponding measure value, but we automatically pivot it because it's a uh, dynamic measure. Now, instead of actually selecting the complete uh, uh, measure group, we have the ability to select the individual measures as well. Let's say if you want to select the number of open cases, in this particular case, I'm going to select a number of uh, uh, case categories uh, of type data, and then also a, a totally a different measure group. Uh, you know, here, I'm, I'm selecting a number of incidents, right? Two different measures coming from two different measure groups, and then I'm going to actually select in a dimension, apply uh, you know, the same filter that we have uh, previously selected uh, on quarter 2017 Q2, and then go, and go ahead and uh, execute it. Now, as you see here, uh, we are showing by you know, uh, dimension 2017 Q2, we are showing uh, two different measures, number of, uh, you know, cases, uh, data cases, uh, of which, is, which was coming from case category, and the other one was the number of incidents which was coming from the case type. Right. So this is an example of an attribute group. Uh, we don't have a video to show all the different features, but, you know, we have uh, many other features, such as, you know, supportability to time series. Like, uh, when, when I selected a measure uh, for a time series, you know, you can directly define on any given measure, if you, let's say, want only YTD or QTD or an MTD or all three, you can just define on any given measure, and it's automatically is going to generate a query. Uh, that query generation is going to happen based on the date that is tied to a measure, because obviously, if you need a, uh, a time series, you want to choose a date. Uh, you know, it could be, you know, uh, it is associated to the subject area, and whatever date is actually tied to that, it's going to choose based on that date and get you the YTD, QTD, and uh, MTD. Uh, similarly, if you want to combine two different subject areas, you want to do a union, uh, that's a support, uh, separate query pattern. So these are all the different you know, uh, complex features that we were able to support using the portal. Otherwise, you know, it would have been really difficult you know, if you had to, let's say, generate a directly a data source. It would have been a workaround. Uh, if it is an attribute group, uh, if we have to create a Tableau data source, the only way was uh, you have to create a calculated field, like, you know, number of open cases. You know, that, that'll be a calculated field as case when status equal to open, then number of cases, right? So that, that becomes a calculated field. Uh, tomorrow in the database, let's say if you have a new case status, now you have to go edit the data source and add that additional measure. Here we don't have to add anything. Uh, it is going to be, since it's actually a dynamic measure, it's pulling the values directly from the database. So as and when there are new uh, values coming into the database rows, it's going to show up here as a measure. So that's all uh, we have uh, as part of the session. Any questions? Yep. Uh, do we have a mic? Oh, uh, 
for uh, the entire portal and uh, the Rust APIs? Yeah, it took us uh, three to four months, I would say. Yeah, the Rust API itself was, uh, you know, uh, was pretty simple. But you know, creating the metadata repository in, in terms of defining the model, and then ensuring all of that content of EDW is loaded into the metadata repository, and then the Java services for the query prep and uh, the portal itself took a little longer. Uh, So Tableau was one of the uh, tools that we have chosen, right? That's the best visualization tool that we have. And uh, with Tableau, uh, when it comes to visualization and when it comes to using the advanced charting features, Tableau was the best, right? Uh, no question about it. But when it comes to the query preparation, uh, for, an anal uh, for an analyst, you know, it takes a lot of time for a query prep. You know, if, in order to actually generate a report, he needs to first create a data source which means he needs to understand the model, he needs to understand you know, there are different tables of EDW, how they're interrelated, they have to import all of these tables into the data source, create all of that joins. So it becomes you know, a, a whole lot of activity just for the query prep. So our goal, our intent was to actually cut down the, the, the time taken uh, for an analyst to understand the data model. Instead, you know, focus on the reporting, uh, we want them to just go select whatever attributes they want to select from their uh, respective subject areas, uh, and then focus more on the visual and story building capabilities of Tableau. Right? That was the right, you know, intent, and that's why, you know, with this, you know, we were able to, you know, uh, literally expose every single attribute of EDW uh, using that uh, portal. Right, so uh, for the data source, you know, let, okay. uh, the question is, uh, what's the necessity of uh, creating uh, the portal and showing all of the subject areas? We could have predefined all of the data sources uh, within Tableau itself, right? That was a question. Yes, we can actually predefine all of these uh, data sources. We can probably create a certified data sources, predefine all of the elements. But you know, as, as you, know, you know, let's say, you know, if you have a huge volume, of data, then if you have to expose, take any uh, big subject area, it could have 2,000 attributes. At the lowest grain, if you have to enable, whether it's a live connection or even an extract, it becomes really difficult to support that kind of a huge model, right? Uh, because, you know, if, whether you select the attributes or not, you still are actually including all 2,000 attributes. Now, in our presentation model, the way it was happening is we expose all of the elements uh, into the portal, but based on the selection, we, we actually limit the number of attributes and generate the SQL query. Plus, you know, the column level security and row level security, if you want to define on various data policies and define a row level security, it was dif becoming difficult uh, for, uh, to apply all of that in the data source itself. Otherwise, you know, we, we probably have to create a lot of data sources based on individual users and their access. Right. Plus, uh, we also have seen that, you know, uh, uh, of course, you know, uh, extract works great, but when it comes to the lowest grain exposing almost like 2,000 attributes, I, I don't know how practical it is because we did actually face a lot of performance issues, right? Uh, So uh, the way we used to handle uh, previously without this portal was creating multiple data sources. So one was created for an aggregated information wherein we were aggregating a whole lot of data, creating a backend table, and then with very few set of attributes we were exposing as an aggregate data source. And then there was another data source which was detailed, but then now you have to educate your users, uh, ensuring that you know, they don't actually use the detail for just the aggregation, right? So there's a whole lot of education that is needed, and any time you add any new enhancements, now to, do, to add it to the data source, you have to go and add it to every single data source. Like, you know, there's a whole lot of duplicate in terms of the measures, dimensions, and everything. 
Whereas here, you know, we can just present within that presentation layer, uh, you know, as and when there are enhancements happening, we don't have to edit the data source. We just, you know, enhance the metadata layer and user has those additional uh, enhancements uh, readily available. So, sorry, can you actually repeat that? Sure. Um, how are the user interfaces as to the presentation layer and the remix that you said, OK, like you don't need any blank remix to the info level to write that limitation? Yeah, so uh, you know, uh, the question was, uh, how are we limiting uh, the data? You know, if you can user select all of the elements without applying filter? Yes and no. Uh, because uh, if let's say there is a huge subject area, right, with a whole, you know a lot of volume, now to certain set of uh, users you can restrict it based on that recommended filters, right? So what we do is upon selection we know which subject area has been selected by user. Uh, based on that selection uh, we know what are the recommended filters or the what are the filters that I need to apply. So uh, when we were actually in one of the video, you know, when we selected the attributes and then clicked on next, the filter automatically showed, showed up, right? I think, you know, it was a snapshot date. It, it, it automatically showed up because we know that, you know, okay, this is a snapshot subject area and I need to limit based on one of the snapshot, right? So that was, uh, you know, the way we are actually restricting. Now it depends on subject area. If you have a smaller subject areas wherein you don't want to apply a filter, you know, you don't have to create a recommended filters at all, right? And you don't have to make it mandatory, I mean to say. Yeah. It was using multiple tools and technologies. There is a web server, uh, there is an application server, AngularJS, uh, and uh, we are using Redis for, for some of the caching activity, like, you know, when the data is exposed, when the content, metadata content is exposed onto the front end portal. Uh, it was using the Redis for the caching, and MongoDB for all of the activity that is happening on the uh, on the portal. Like you know, when, whenever user is uh, selecting the attributes and trying to save as a, a Tableau data source, there is a, a template, uh, you know, also saved in the MongoDB. Because if user wants to come and add additional attributes to the data source, he comes to the you know uh, presentation model and then you know he can add it, right? So some of the user behavior activity was taken care of through the MongoDB. It was actually a combination of uh, uh, different uh, set of uh, skill sets. Uh, we had UI, UX uh, developers. Uh, we had uh, back-end uh, Java developers and front-end Java developers. And, uh, uh, database uh, admins, uh, data modelers, uh, and of course SMEs who understand the data. Combination of uh, you know different uh, teams, different skill sets. Yep. Uh, question is, uh, what is the largest uh, data source? Uh, we have a you know one of the subject area payroll, uh, which was. Uh, the total volume was one billion records, actually. Yeah, that's the transactional volume. Of course, uh, dimensions, uh, most of the dimensions, uh, being a HR company, we, we have to track the entire history of uh, you know, our WCs, right? Any changes that are happening to an employee, uh, we track the entire history, and uh, we do provide the point-in-time reporting. So, uh, yes, I mean, transactional volume, that was our biggest subject area. We do have other subject areas which are uh, close to 50 million to 100 million records. Some of the snapshots were pretty big, specifically when it comes to benefits. The recommendation is live. Uh, most of the cases, uh, because uh, we don't want to actually have too many data extracts as well, then it becomes you know sort of uh, an ETL load into the data extract itself, right? So our recommendation is as much as possible as a live connection. Uh, but if you have to have a story building capability wherein you want to have an interactivity with the, you know, uh, the data, then you know, we do have option for extract as well.
Absolutely. Uh, yep. Uh, now, because you know we have all the data exposed in the portal, now user doesn't have. I mean, of course, you know, with the latest uh, you know Tableau versions, you know, there is a no need for a desktop. But previous versions, let's say, if you want to create a data source, it was difficult to actually create using the server. You know, a uh, lot of features were not available. Uh, you know, for you to create a data source and publish it, you need to have a desktop. You know, you know, you know previously, but with this approach, uh, you know, we don't have to have uh, a desktop. Uh, because everything was taken care of through the SD, SDK and REST API. Any other questions? Uh, so this uh, has gone live a few months back. Uh, we have uh, the portal itself, I mean, uh, the Tableau application I've shown the customer app. Uh, we are already generating a lot of PDF documents and distributing it to the customers. Uh, but the uh, Tiger portal, right now, we have been using uh, quite a bit of the Tableau. Uh, the portal and the integration, that is going live uh, for one of our departments, benefits departments, uh, in the next two weeks. So if there's any more questions, uh, you know, we'll share uh, our uh, email IDs, uh, and uh, you can uh, talk to us anytime. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs>